There we go. Okay, so Ask Anything Friday is just a real casual way to come together, ask any questions that anybody has in regards to their marketing, social media, their their business, anything really. Um, so it's not as structured as the presentation that we did before. Hey, Colleen. Hi. I can hear us yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we just come on, ask questions. If there's anything going on or anybody saw anything kind of new or cool, you know, feel free to share it. I invited Amanda to come back on today because um, she did a really great job with the last presentation on LinkedIn and I do want to spend time talking about LinkedIn a little bit because, um, which is why Amanda's here, I don't because it really is like the sleeping giant. I know I keep saying that, but it's been around for a long time and then it got ignored for a long time and now it's back. And I kind of laughed because I was reading um, something this morning and obviously on social media, everybody's back on social media, right? Everybody who said, Christmas, I'm getting off Facebook and I'm never coming back again. <laughs> I'm done with social media. Well, they're back. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and every platform is just spiking in regards to how many people are coming, especially TikTok. TikTok has had a huge growth increase during this whole pandemic. The only one that has seen a decrease is LinkedIn. And I thought the way the article was written was a little bit skewed because it made it sound like it didn't have as much value. But in reality, businesses are paused, businesses are on hold. So it totally makes sense why LinkedIn has dropped a little bit during this time. But I will tell you personally, I definitely <laughs> see the value in LinkedIn. I've been doing more on LinkedIn um, and talking more about it because there um there obviously is a lot of value in being over there and making connections and i had a girl i didn't know if she was going to hop on today or not but since she's doing the homeschooling she can't really do that but she made a comment she called the other day because um she um was she got a new client who purchased her product but she had no idea where this client came from and when she asked she's like oh my gosh deanna they came from linkedin and she doesn't have a, she's part of a multi-level marketing. She's not part of a, like, I don't want to say her own business because it is still their own business, but multi-level marketing is a little bit different that I would think it would typically work better depending on the product, her product in particular on Facebook and Instagram. And here she's like, Hey, it worked on, on LinkedIn. Like I've got this customer and she made this huge order and she kept seeing my stuff on LinkedIn. And so then she decided to actually um, purchase, like come on board as like a member. I can't go what the actual terminology is. So, so I think that's pretty cool. That's why I invited Amanda to come back and talk a little bit about LinkedIn. But a couple questions, um, and then I'll open up to see what you guys have, if you have any questions. As far as your engagement, on social media right now. Have you seen an incline or a decline? I'd say it's been roughly the same for me. Is it? I've had, well, what's interesting is I've had more profile views in the last couple weeks. I've noticed an uptick in that. And I also noticed that, actually, yeah, now that you bring it up, I, cause, uh, I feel like, I don't know if it's like every Friday or if it does this for everybody, but it sends you like that recap every week. Like even in, I, I had an uptick in search results too, which was interesting. Actually, it's almost double. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I don't know if I've noticed really much in terms of engagement, but I have noticed, I guess on the SEO side, if you will, of things on LinkedIn. I've noticed yeah. it. I've noticed similar um, I've noticed more engagement personally but I did notice like because I every week I'll go through with my clients and and look at their numbers and where are their impressions and their reach and the first week of this it was like everything declined and then the next following week, yeah everything increased <laughs> so it was kind of like this little bit of a a swoop the what decline was when everybody was out buying toilet paper and now they're back yeah, that's it <laughs> <laughs> 
How about everybody else? Have you guys noticed an increase in engagement or a decrease? Mine's pretty much stayed the same. And like, it's all dependent. This is so weird. Like I'm looking at my Facebook and I've got my Instagram pulled up. Like it's weird. I would say maybe it's gone up a little bit, but like the, the video I posted about um, being from the Mahoney Valley and like helping each other, like that went skyrocketed through the freaking roof. So it's all dependent on the content that I put out. And I'm not saying to like, to like blow my own horn, but it's like, if my face is on the video, people watch it. I don't know. But like, but like we've talked about that before, where is if, if you do the video and you're on it and you're talking about, and I'd like to also point out that was a Facebook live. So that probably has something to do with it a little bit there too. But I don't, I don't think it's going down. I think it's me basically stayed the same. Yeah. On Facebook. Now on Instagram, eh, it's gone up a little bit. I would say, I would ahead. say on LinkedIn, since I've been posting those videos recently, um, again, echoing what Becky just said, as far as if people are seeing my face versus me posting an article, it seems as though there's a better response. But you know, y'all have been saying video works for quite a while now. So I think that that's, that's partly what's at play um, is going video versus, you know, just just the article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, video is really a big deal. And, and I made a comment the other day to Tammy saying, I have seen people going live that never in my life would I think would go live. And now they all of a sudden when their business is kind of on the on the line and it's really important, people are finally finding that courage to put themselves out there. And um, it, I like it. Like, I like seeing people do that. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Deanna, did you, did you see what Extending Grace did on a Wednesday night? Did I see what? Did you see what Extending Grace did on Wednesday night? Did they do the shopping? They did the shopping thing. Um, I need to not go live. I need to not watch that video because, I mean, it was great. Like, they had some, Susan and Devin had some technical glitches. Like, I think their Wi-Fi signal was down, but it was great. Like, you were, I, I bought something. I didn't need it, but I bought it. Um, but they just, like, if you guys aren't aware, Extending Grace is this, this vintage shop in Ohio, and I have a lot of stuff that they've, um, that I've, I've bought from them. It, it's just like cool, like vintage rustic farmhouse, but they're closed, but they go in on Wednesday night and they do basically like online shopping and they have a, I don't think it's their proprietary app. It's called Comment Sold. It's something that I think that they purchased to be able to do this. But what they do is like each item has a number, they hold up the number, they describe it, and if you want it, you type con you you type sold, and then like whatever the item number is, and then you automatically get a message in Facebook Messenger that says, "Hey, go and finish this purchase." And then once this ban's lifted, you can go and pick up the item, or you can have it shipped. Like I'm just gonna go and pick it up when it's done. But it's super cool, and it's super ingenious that they're still trying to reach the audience and and make a little bit of money while this is all kind of going down. And I'm probably going to buy some end tables from them very much. <laughs> I just thought, I was like, God, that is so cool. Like, they're just, they're making lemons out of, le or lemonade out of lemons. I yeah. saw, I saw the one they did last week, and I was like, oh my God, that is awesome. And I love how they started. They're like, we're 60 some years old, and we're doing this. Oh, and they're, they're great. They're awesome. Yeah, Susan and Devin, if you guys are not familiar with Extending Grace, they are out of Hubbard, Ohio. Um, when they joined, I think they did, they joined the Entrepreneur Society four years ago, three years ago, like right out of the gate, they joined it. And literally when it came to digital marketing, knew nothing about it. And Devin and, and or Susan is actually more of the digital marketer over Devin, but these two women rock it. Like they are, their Instagram is flipping amazing, but they're using Facebook too. So if you guys need to see an example of what's working, go check out Extending Grace on Facebook or Instagram because they are, they, they really are. This, they're doing an awesome job with everything. Yeah, you know, that's so funny you say that because I think the first in-person thing I went to of yours, I sat next to Susan at YBI and she had like no idea how Facebook functioned. Like she kept like interrupting because she didn't understand it. So it's actually really cool to see how well she does now 
it's really it's, they're they're amazing i, I, I agree it's it. like huh we're just on it like she's like i have no yeah. idea what i'm doing i'm like well you're doing a pretty damn good job if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> Yeah, they really are. And it's almost like like raising a child and watching them fly. I'm like, every time they do something, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. Well, I feel like what makes them successful is that, number one, they're just being themselves. They're not trying to be professional. They're not trying to, like, when she started, we don't know what we're doing, so there's some glitches. Work with us. You know, like, it wasn't annoying. And I think that's what helps them sell is their personality really comes through and it's okay. Like a lot of people think you have to be super professional. Wow, Lisa needs to mute herself. Yeah. I have a quick question about that, though. Um, do you think that that coming off as professional is industry-related? Because that's what my big fear is about going live, is because of the nature of what I do. Oh, so I need, to, I need to present myself as, you know, somebody who can communicate, since I'm a trainer um, and presenter. So when I stumble, that's why I've been recording my stuff, because then I can redo it until it is right. But is it industry specific? So if I was doing something live and was saying the things like you just shared, Colleen, would my listeners think differently about, about me being able to do what I do? I think because you're an educator that I think that you need to have some level of professionalism. But I think what's going to sell you and keep people remembering you is the type of relationships that you're building with your clients, your future clients. You need to be able to relate to them. Like, like from account, like thinking of times when I went to a counselor or sought help from someone, it's like I learned more and I got more from people that I connected with. So, but at some point they, they had a certain level of professionalism that you just respect, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think if you showed up in your pajamas and was like, what's up, everybody? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I would go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> but like right now, like every time you communicate, you're very put together that when you do talk, I listen because I'm, I respect the level of professionalism. Whereas with Devin and Susan, they own a, a shop that they started themselves and they, you know, so they can be a little more loose in their presentation of things. So mm -hmm. I, I do agree with you that industry matters. Okay, I appreciate that. You don't want to be super feedback. stuck up because then nobody's going to like you. You got to be likable. Well, yeah, that's why I'm afraid I don't want to come off too, you know, rigid or, I don't know, yeah. polished. I actually watched either. your videos and I think you, I watched a couple of them because I'm, um, I feel like I'm emotionally weak, <laughs> but um, I like that you're, you're very professional in, but you, like one thing that I think that might help you is maybe if you did a more relaxed setting. Like still kept your level of professionalist. I know you have your green background. Yeah. But you like sat like this the whole time and like just talked and there was like no hand movements. There wasn't like, hey, let me show okay. you this. Like it wasn't I could tell I was doing a video with you and not um like talking to my friend, you know? Yep. Yep, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I would I would I agree with what Colleen says, um, Kelly. Like there's a fine line that you have to walk. Um, because like exactly what she said, you don't want to come off as so polished because I see people that are like super polished and I'm like, I like, it's almost like, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to get near you because like, I'm afraid I'm going to break you or like, <laughs> you still have to, you still have to come off as, as a human and vulnerable, but you can still do that in, in no, sorry, I'm going to swear, know your shit and be, and be very good at communicating that. Yeah. Um, I, and I think that you walk that line very well. It's just like, if I see people that are like super prim and proper and don't say um when they speak and don't stumble across their words, I'm like, you're a frigging robot. And you might have the personality yeah. of a cardboard box. I don't know that. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of where, where I think is because in Colleen, you said it, it's like, I want to connect with that person. Yep. So if I can see that that person has not flaws, but they're human, you know, everybody everybody screws up. We are not Mary Poppins. We are not practically perfect in every way. By the way, I watched that last night. Oh my God. So good. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that about the ums, because I re-recorded, I don't know, one of my videos because in the first like 30 seconds, I think I had seven or eight ums. <laughs> I try very hard not to say um. I am very conscious of it. One of my friends is a speech therapist. And when I gave my presentation in Las Vegas, Marilyn texted me and she goes, don't say um. And it's, it's hard to do. I'm aware of it. I know I'm saying it, but it just comes out of my mouth. So like, like, I'm, like. Trying, 
Yes. I'm trying to, instead of saying um, pause. And I think when I gave that presentation in Vegas, I didn't say um, but I just recorded the April training. I was saying um, I'm like, all right, this is, this is nice. Good job, Beck. Well, that's but, interesting. Oh, sorry, go. Go ahead, Becky. No, but it, I mean, it's, it's really hard not to say um. Yeah, it is. Well, and in fact, I have my sister, she's a teacher. And so I, uh, she's my, do I sound stupid checker? So I'm, you know, she's home right now. So all these videos I send to her and the very first one I did, she goes, I counted you saying um or ah 30 times in like this, I don't know, four minute thing. So she's like, do it over. You sound stupid. <laughs> so I have that checker in, in place, but you're right. I think that sprinkling in a couple of those makes you feel or makes you appear more human and not a robot. Yeah. So one of the things in Ohio, um, our health director, she talks every day at two to give us an update. She's, she's a pretty amazing woman, but she says I'm um, all the time and these live videos and I watch everybody's comments and they're like, let's drink every time she says um, because she says it a lot. But I think because she's so nice and she's so presentable and she just, you could feel that she generally cares that I overlook it. Her ums don't bother me on day 1000, you know? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, she does say um a lot, but what? I don't know. I mean, the way that I look at that is she's a healthcare professional. You know, I don't know. I'm thinking, she probably knows like what she's talking about and maybe maybe speaking to a large group of people isn't her cup of tea maybe she's really good at just one-on-one -on -one interaction and yeah, but when what she said is she's to a cameraman because there's like nobody else in the yeah. room yeah but she knows when she's going out to the mask <laughs> i don't know i i think sometimes, sometimes they're too like, clinical and they're trying to layman layman term it down yeah sometimes when they're being very you know that clinical mind and you're trying to layman term yeah because yeah. if you think about it think if dewine was saying um every three seconds he's an elected official that wouldn't go over the same i don't think as it will work in politics those they're actors yeah no <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm true. I'm true. Yes. um because i I'm, I'm, tr I'm not, I'm not going political here. I'm solely going on merit of public speaking, but right. Donald Trump is a horrendous public speaker. <laughs> I've watched his press briefings and I'm like, how are you a successful businessman when you speak like a third grader? I agree with you. I, I like, I, I'm I taking politics correct. completely out of it. I don't care if you're for him against him. I think we can all agree. This dude sucks at speaking in public. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm gonna get off my high horse and we'll we'll move on because I feel like I've just completely hijacked this video well can I ask one thing that does relate back to LinkedIn so like do you all have a just quickly an opinion about coming off more polished when you're posting it to LinkedIn versus posting it to Facebook or posting it somewhere else is there a difference between not only the industry that you're in and how you're supposed to be representing yourself but then also where you're posting it I think your representation needs to be consistent across all platforms okay. because you think especially with what you do you're helping someone um, with professional development and how to interact within their environment so I think that you need to always be showing that as an example but I mean consistency is what makes people like remember you and like you and you know come to you for your services so I think in depth and even in other cases like I want someone to be themselves all the time like that's like like, this is going to be some kind of dumb, like, I don't know. Never mind, I'm going to leave that to myself because <laughs> it wasn't no, very nice. Colleen, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I used to work with someone and they were completely different at work um, than they were outside of work. And I, that rubbed me the wrong way. I, I really didn't like it uh, because I didn't feel that they were authentic. And I, I would always say, like, you're, you get me whether I'm at work or not at work. Maybe if I'm at work, there's slightly less F words, but you're still going to get the same personality. I, you're not going to get like a, a watered down version of me at work versus at home. Now, granted, you know, if I have to be serious and I have to be professional, there's, there's a time and a place for that. But, you know, I don't, I don't know if you have to have that a different persona for each platform, Kelly. I don't, I don't like that because of what Colleen said. I feel like yep. it's, it's, uh, like a different, like a watered down version. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I add awesome. something and then I'm going to have Amanda. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda. I, no, you're yeah. fine. You're good. So, so I agree with both you and Colleen, and I disagree with both you and Colleen. <laughs> but let me explain. Let me explain why, okay? I do agree. You have to authentically be yourself, right? Your, your brand has its own voice, and you, you should stay consistent with that all the time. So on that level, I absolutely agree. However, I also know that my audience on Facebook looks a lot different than my audience on LinkedIn. So, so the material that I post on, for me personally, and I think every business is a little bit different, so this may not be with, with you, Kelly, but maybe somebody else can relate. What I post on LinkedIn might be more of a casual version of me because my audience are typically people in my sphere, not everybody. I don't know everybody who follows me on Facebook, but um, it is more of a, a casual, a casual, it's like this, where LinkedIn, it might be a little bit more, um, and I don't wanna say polished because I don't really think I'm polished. <laughs> like, I think you get just me, but the content might look a little bit different because that audience is more business-minded and Facebook is more um, community minded. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's just it, it's just two different environments. So on that level, I might present myself a little bit different. Not that I'm changing who I am. I'm still being me. It's just what information I'm putting out there might look a little different. What do you think, Amanda? Because we called you on to be the LinkedIn girl. No, today. I, no, no. I I enjoy listening to all of you. Yeah. So honestly, like my, my take is I make my videos for LinkedIn. That's honestly what I do them for. Um, I, my clients don't really come from Facebook, so I don't really focus as much. They're like, I'll repost it the same video, but like my videos are, I mean, I, they're not highly produced at all. I do everything. I just do, I film them on my iPhone. I do, um, the, the edits on iMovie. Um, but like my style, just me as a person, it's just, it's kind of like a playful type thing. You know what I mean? So I find that balance of how can I do that? So like every video, and I never realized it until my husband pointed out is I always start out by going, Hey, busy bloggers like that. Cause that's just me. I'm just happy, you know? And my husband's like, that is just so you, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, that's what you're going to get. If you're going to meet me in person, you're going to get someone like that. And I just, I don't want to give off, like, like Becky was saying, a different type of person when you meet me. You know what I mean? So I just try, I don't know, I find a balance of how can I make this playful in me, but still educational and informative. That's really what I, I focus on. If that's that, a helpful answer. <laughs> yes, that does. That's very helpful, all of you. Um, so thank you for weighing in on that. I appreciate it very much. Callie, what is it that you do? I know you're self-employed, but I'm not sure what you do. I'm a, a learning and development trainer. So oh. I'm certified in emotional intelligence, but I also do some things with uh, multiple generations nice. and leadership okay. development. Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. So LinkedIn is a perfect platform for you. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Hi, <laughs> whoever's walking behind you. <laughs> Hi, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> any other questions about, I mean, really anything, and then we'll, we'll kind of hop a little bit more into LinkedIn. If you have a LinkedIn question, definitely ask it. Um, but any questions on anything? Lisa, did you have a question? No? Okay. I didn't know if you were raising your hand. <laughs> any questions? All right, well, if you do, feel free to ask. So Amanda, I have some questions for you. Okay. Um, let's talk about like, what are some things that we should, when we're on LinkedIn, right? If we do, hopefully we're all on LinkedIn and doing something. But what are some key things that we should pay attention to as far as even making sure our profile looks good? What, well, are, what would you recommend? Well, first of all, make sure it's updated. Like, it's really easy to forget about your profile. Like, I feel like you're so busy interacting, which that's the point, interacting with other people on there that you forget, like, people are looking at you too, you know? 
So yeah, especially if you haven't touched it in six months to a year, you definitely need to go on there and refresh things. Um, some mistakes that I see is people like they'll go on there and they'll kind of like just write out a resume type. I mean, there, there's, there is a section for a resume, but they kind of just summarize the resume section in the profile. And I don't really think that's the smartest approach. You know, you, you want to give an idea of who you are as a person, tell your story. I'm not saying your life story because people are probably going to not sit there for that whole time, but you know, what may a starting point that makes sense for you, um, have it optimized with keywords, especially if, if you're ex anticipating to get clients from LinkedIn, um, different keywords in the content itself, um, your headline, um, like, like I said in the last presentation, I'm kind of on the fence about getting too cute with your headline. Um, I think it needs to be a balance of like who you are and how you serve people, but kind of blending the keywords in there at the same time. Um, and there's, all, remember, there's also a section too. You can add like, you can add video on there. Like I had, um, I think it's still on there. I had a client testimonial on there, video one, like stuff like that. I don't think a lot of people think about. So putting that kind of stuff on your profile can really help you stand apart, especially now, you know, that video is so prominent and people are having some downtime. This might be a good time to get some video testimonials from people specifically for LinkedIn. And, and remember, not only can you put that on your profile, you can also just post it. You know what I mean? Which would be really cool and compelling, I think. So hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love the idea of the video testimony because I'm in my head, I'm thinking how many different ways I can use that one person if they're brave enough to do a video testimony for you, you can put it on yeah. your LinkedIn, you can put it on your website, you can pull what they said, the verbiage and create, um, just put the text or do a testimonial as far as a graphic, like you can repurpose that in a lot of different ways. And, and I love that idea. And you're right, now's the time, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Now's the time, everybody's, you know, at home on their phones, and maybe since they're at home, they'd feel more comfortable doing it too. Yeah, you know, instead so of being true. put on the spot when they're at work, they can have, you know, a couple of days to prepare and do it somewhere that they feel comfortable and no one's around either, you know. Quick question about that. If I recorded somebody giving me a testimonial on my phone, is there a way to, is there some way for me to edit that? Because right when he started, he goes, so are you ready? And is there a way for me to cut that off the beginning? Um, yeah. And what do I use to do that? On the iPhone, do you have an iPhone? Yeah. There is, you can edit a video. Now, you can trim from the front or the end. So if he actually says, so are you ready at the front? You can trim that. But if there's, okay. if there's like mess ups in the middle of it, I couldn't tell you if the iPhone would do that. I don't think, but there's programs um, you can use for video editing. If you have a Mac, iMovie is pretty easy to use. There's... There's another one, I haven't used it as much, but it's called, called Movavi, M-O-V-A-V-I, I believe it's spelled. And uh, that's a video editing software. It's it's not very expensive. I can't remember how much it was, but I think it was under $100. Okay. Um, there's probably some free ones out there, but I, like my video is so minimal. I just use iMovie because it came with my Mac. So that's okay. what I'm the most familiar with. Thank you. And Kelly, this month, um, in the Entrepreneur Society, Becky is teaching everything about video and how to make videos and, and edit them easily from your phone or from different devices. So um, she will be doing a training on that as well. So hop in there. Yeah, Tuesday, the videos drop. <laughs> and yeah, Tuesday, the, edit, the video training and the workbook for her drops in the portal. So anybody who is part of the Entrepreneur Society, you can watch um, her presentation, her workbook, and then she is going to be going, coming on on Fridays for group, group trainings. So answering your, I don't know how many group trainings, but I keep, I'm going to hound her. I'm talking about you, Becky. Yeah, sorry. I had like work, work <laughs> on. I actually like, had to do like actual work for once. Um, no. <laughs> Um, I think I told you I could do them for the next three Fridays. So, um, if you guys have any more questions on video editing and shooting video, I can, I can help you out. Awesome. 
Awesome. Well, actually speaking, Becky can help you too, because there's another other points that I wanted to make for um, refreshing your profile, basically. So yeah. I think other people forget about the the banner at the top. You do have kind of, you know, the like the Facebook cover photo, LinkedIn kind of has the same similar thing. I think it's smaller, but you can have someone like Becky design that for you to get some brand consistency for you during this downtime. I think that'd be a really smart thing to do. And um Using, when you're writing your profile, there is a, in Chrome, I don't know about the other um, browsers, but in Chrome, there's a, a, an extension called Grammarly. It's just the word grammar with L-Y at the end. And it will edit inside of the LinkedIn text box. And so it'll catch like grammatical and spelling errors and things like that. And um, also, if your profile photo is outdated, that's something that you can work on getting done. Um, pretty sure, well, I mean, your, your phone can take pretty good pictures, but if you know you want the really professional type, you can hire a photographer. And I'm, I'm sure with social distancing, you can figure out a six feet away type deal. I, 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 could, I could see that could probably work, but in the meantime, it's just something to think about if you haven't done that lately. Awesome. Amanda, what is, um, how many times would you recommend posting? Like LinkedIn, as far as it's, it's life of a post, how often do you post on LinkedIn? Are you doing it once a day, multiple times a day, uh, once a week? Like, do you have a pattern? What works? Yeah, ideally I like to do two to three times a week when I'm not completely, to be completely transparent, when I'm not swamped with client work, um, I like to do at least two to three times a week. Um, I like to do one video, which is my Tip Tuesday video, and it's it's all content. Like for you, those of you I know I haven't talked to some of you on here before, like my primary thing is blogging and content writing, content development. Um, so I like to give tips on, you know, how to improve your blog, what to do about case studies, white papers, um, FAQ sections on your website. So anyway, I give, um, I give tips on that. And then I like to post a blog. Sometimes it's a new blog, sometimes it's repurposed. And then other things I like to post, I will make like little graphics for my blog. They're kind of, they're not really infographics, um, but they're informative. Like they're just like little lists kind of, and I'll repost those just to, you know, for something different. So I kind of, I like to make, I like to mix the media type is my point. I don't like to do just all blogs or all video. I like to mix it up as much as I can. Awesome. Um, does anyone have a question? Cause I'll keep, I'll keep asking them and go ahead. <laughs> I, I do it. Oh, who raised her hand? Sorry. Go ahead. I'll wait. No, 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 you go ahead. I've been talking a lot. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you. Um, Amanda, like, I, I get kind of um, annoyed on LinkedIn, and maybe because I'm so used to the Facebook platform, but how do you, um, how do you track, like, the things that you're posting and your insights and stuff? Do you individually go to each post? That's honestly what I do. Um, I just kind of scroll back, because I'll check through the week. Because I notice sometimes, like, I'll post a Tip Tuesday video, and oddly, it'll start getting a lot of traction a couple days later. That's the weird thing about LinkedIn, especially in my experience in comparison to Facebook, is, like, you can just start getting random traction from a yeah. random post. So, yeah, I just kind of... I ahead. get annoyed. I get annoyed because if I post something and multiple people comment on it, it's like, it sends me all these notifications, but they're not in, like, chronological order. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. when you look at it, you have you it's hard to you have to go find your original post to see everything. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. Yeah. Because someone could be like, oh, I'm commenting on what somebody else commented, and it's like I can't see that. <laughs> right, right. So that I didn't know if you had know any tricks to get around that. I don't, but uh, that actually brought up an interesting point. Um, I read somewhere that a way to get traction on a post is um if somebody comments um on your on your post tagging them like responding to them tagging them and liking their comment is supposed to help boost exposure and, and feed into the algorithm so if anybody oh, okay. would yeah would end up posting on your thing to help maximize the exposure um tagging specifically i read can help a lot 
And when you tag on LinkedIn, it only notifies that person. Like it doesn't show up in their feed that they were tagged in something. Right. Yeah. Like I said, that, that's Facebook, what I look. If you tag somebody, it shows up on their feed. Yeah. So like if I'm friends with you and Deanna tagged you in something, I would see it in my news feed where that's not the same case in LinkedIn. So right. if you, so if Deanna tagged you only you would see that you were tagged in Deanna's post, like your followers wouldn't see. See, I, I feel like I, I see things that people are tagged in, but like, I think it's kind of like Facebook too. I think the algorithm changes. I feel like they go back and forth sometimes and that's what makes it confusing. <laughs> you know, like I, Facebook obviously is notorious for that than just changing stuff so much. But so to clarify, you probably see if somebody commented on something, you'd be like, oh, Amanda commented on this or Deanna yes. commented on Amanda's yeah. But if Deanna was like, hey, Amanda speaking today and she tagged you in something, only you would see that. That wouldn't come to my newsfeed, even though I'm friends with both of you. So I'm not going to see like Amanda was, Amanda was tagged in this post. I'm, I'm just going to see the post. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Where like so, Facebook, I, Facebook would tell you, hey, this person was tagged. Right. And I think that's, I think honestly, that's kind of a weird thing about LinkedIn. I, I, you would think that they would want to broadcast your network. That's why it's important when you are tagged to stay on top of things, especially if it's relevant, like how I was tagged for this presentation today to reshare it, to make sure that your network or for you to be able to tag other people that you think would be interested also. Yeah. So that would, that would get them into the newsfeed too. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> I know, I know you didn't have an answer for that. I just didn't know if you did certain tricks because it's kind of, it's really frustrating. Like, because you don't have like a news feed that on LinkedIn as you would on Facebook. So people aren't seeing your stuff. So unless you post something yourself, like I'm not seeing it. Like there's no wall. Right. Like Facebook has the wall where if I tagged you on Facebook, it would show up on your wall. So yeah. then if I looked you up, I could see everything you were tagged in. LinkedIn doesn't have that. So maybe that's a better way to explain what I'm taught referring to. So like, I can't see, like, I can't go see everything you were tagged in. Yeah, no, no, I, I've never seen that option. That would be a nice option. I'm not really sure why LinkedIn wouldn't have that feature. Yeah, I didn't know if you knew something I didn't. So. No, I wish I did because <laughs> that would definitely be helpful. <laughs> That's one thing I think Facebook got right is to do stuff like that. For sure. Kelly, you had a question? Yeah, but if anybody else does, I'll wait. Cause like I said, I've been talking a lot today. So nobody else does. Nope. Go. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not, it's not linked. Well, it's not um, associated with LinkedIn. So, okay. um, a faculty member friend of mine um, is doing a session on Generation Z and when I went to go sign up for it, um, it took me to Google Forms to enter all of my, you know, information for registering for it and she's using Zoom, which I believe she's using Zoom when she facilitates it. It's free so there's no um, money collect being collected but I was just kind of curious because the last time that I was here and I was talking about okay where's the what's the best platform to use for registering people for events um, whether it's a free event or a uh, event that you'd be charging for any opinions on you know why she might have been using Google Forms to collect registration information so emails names phone numbers all that stuff because she didn't use the zoom registration <laughs> Okay. Zoom actually has a registration platform that you can and use on your meetings. Even for the free version? Mm, and I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I Anybody use it for work Wait, what was the question multiple again? times. I, sorry, I was text. I was trying to get an email because somebody thought I posted something I shouldn't have for work. Um, <laughs> what was the question about needing to register? Using the Google Forms for registration instead. And why did she Zoom. use it instead of and and Tammy had said that you can actually register on Zoom, but then Kelly asked, "Are you able to register um, on Zoom if you have the free version of Zoom?" And yeah, I don't know. You can. 
Yeah, I have the free version of Zoom and I'm registered on it, which is why like when I went to um, answer that phone call, you saw that profile picture of me. Like I have a Zoom account and it's free. And like, just as an example, I hosted like multiple happy hours last weekend and it kept telling me like, hey, 40 minutes, like you either upgrade or we kick you off and I got kicked off. But I do have like, it's a free Zoom account. I've got a profile and I can schedule meetings and all that stuff. But can somebody register for your event? So like if you were... There's a registration. When you set up a meeting, you can click require registration. And you can collect their name and email. Uh -huh. Oh, that I don't know because I just send the link out. Yeah. So Zoom does have that for any of you guys that use it and you want to do registrations. I, I don't know if it has it on the um, free version. I'd have to look. But on the paid version, you can do registrations for meetings. And is it different if you use the webinar feature on Zoom? The webinar feature is a different platform mm -hmm. and you have to pay for that. So right. I actually am a facilitator on a webinar base at, at my job. Okay. So, um, but the, yes, you can, and you can, um, you can ask specific questions on your registration. I mean, you can do all of that, but yes. And that's okay. why where we used the webinar at first because it was, we were, it was listen only and we had to collect that registration information for our statistics. Okay. Thank you. So basically she did it wrong. <laughs> well, she may have a reason yeah, to do it that she way. May be. She may have something that is connected to Google forms that makes it easier for her. But it may make sense for her on why she did it. Okay. So I have a question on the LinkedIn thing. So I have my own personal profile and then I created a business page. Uh -huh. So I post occasionally on the business page and then I share it on my own. Okay. I mean, is that, should I scrap the business page and just do my own or is that how you guys kind of do that too? Well, what I, I see your, comp your 406 digital imaging. What, what is your company? Like, what do you do? So that is my company. Um, I photo scan and organize, digitize uh, memories, memorabilia, slides, negatives. Okay, so um, I th are you are your um, clients typically are you B two B or B two C or both? It could be both. both? It could okay. potentially could be both. Okay. See, like I, a lot of the. Um, a lot of the company profiles that I see, I, I see like okay engagement on a lot of those. Sometimes like just no engagement. I, um, I feel like a lot of the engagement too on company profiles are employees, not always, but I think that's a big part of it because a, a lot of companies will use the strategy if you, I don't know if you have employees or not, but they'll be like, hey, go, no, you're, you're solo, okay. But anyway, bigger, bigger companies that they'll usually go on and say, hey, you know, like the, like the status on the company page, share it. Yeah, personally, I think, and I think we actually were talking about this the last time. I feel like for solo people, I personally think that your profile, your personal profile is enough, especially if it's optimized correctly and you're using it correctly. Um, I, I think at least having um, a company page and maybe updating it once or twice a month. Like I wouldn't put a ton of effort into it personally, because I know for me, I have all of my attraction has come from my personal profile. Um, well, so, yeah, I have way more followers on my personal than I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even, even sharing the statuses, like, I mean, I might get trickle in people following it, but I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because people feel like they're more following a person instead of a company that could be because people want to buy from people, you know, and not, even, even though you're a solo person, cause I am too, I get it. But yeah, I, um, my following is definitely bigger on, on my personal profile too. So yeah, I wouldn't, I would focus more on optimizing your own stuff on your own personal profile and then kind of just hand off a couple things to your business page, maybe just repurpose a little bit of the content, maybe once or twice a month is my suggestion. You're welcome. Any other questions from anybody? For Amanda, going once, <laughs> twice. 
Uh, all right, we are going to wrap this up. Amanda, I just want to say thank you so much for joining in. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I, honestly, I appreciate it. And she was nice enough to share her, her presentation that she did last week with me. So um, I will share that with everybody and tag her information. So if anybody wants to get in touch, I'm going to share it in the Fearless Entrepreneurship uh, group. Um, if, so if you want to get in touch with Amanda, by all means, you'll have all her information and then her presentation that you can rewatch again. So thank you for being so generous and sharing that with us. I, oh, you're I, welcome. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Um, thank you guys for joining in. I love the questions and as always, I learned a lot and I guess I will catch you all next Friday. So enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yep.